You know, uh, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. And, you know, there's a scripture that says we are to lay aside every weight and sin that would so easily beset us and run with patience. Listen, you guys, I'll put the reference up later on the screen, maybe tomorrow. But I just want to make this point. This is another illustration I believe the Lord just gave me to share with you. Because sometimes it's through the parables and illustrations and and um, analogies, uh, allegories, whatever, where we really can picture what God is really implying in what he says. So, picture a beautiful, excuse me, picture a beautiful mansion. Ah, you walk up, the, the landscaping is breathtaking. The, the, the gardener just does a phenomenal, meticulous job keeping up the grounds. I mean, it's like a work of art. You go up to the door, you look at the at the uh, the terrace, you look at the the columns, I mean the windows, they're they're this beautiful um, uh, what do you call it? crystal artwork. I mean it's just these these bevels and prisms and, and sparkle it's just like oh my goodness this is like a mansion from heaven. Beautiful. You can stay out there all day long and just look at the beauty, the majesty of it all. And then after you knock or ring the doorbell, someone opens the door. And as you get ready to walk inside, not only does the smell hit your nose, but your eyes are overwhelmed by what? What is this? What is going on around here? Oh my goodness. And you realize you have walked into a home of a hoarder. You can't see what kind of floor is on the is under your feet in the entranceway. You can't see how beautiful the staircase looks because everything is covered with boxes, clothes, garbage. Whatever it is, you can't see the beauty because it is so full and packed, jam-packed with clutter. Now, it may be new stuff that never got put away. They might be a collector of dolls or antiques, whatever the case may be. Or they just can't throw any old memories away, so their baby's toys are all over the house along with everything else that they have bought that they never found a place for. And now they're out of space. And even though they have this great, big, beautiful mansion, it's all used up by old clutter. The lack of organization, the lack of order, it's just all chaotic. That is what happens to us as human beings. As we go through life, we go to work, we, we do our, our jobs, we get paid, we pay our bills. We make sure our cars are looking good. We put forth a great presentation. Some of us even counsel others through their lives, handling their issues. And we're great at it. Some of us stand in the pulpit and preach. Some have great executive jobs. We might be the CEOs of companies. And when it comes to what we do out there in the public side, oh, we got it going on, baby. But don't let anybody look beyond the surface. Don't let anybody look past your mask, past the presentation. Don't let anybody look in the secret chambers of your life. That will blow them away or run them away. Because you have not taken the time to allow the light of God's countenance to, to burn inside of you and burn away your anger, your bad memories, your regrets, your shameful uh, issues, your insecurities, your hurts your resentments, your rage. You haven't allowed God to go in and clean you from within. So you walk through life 
a living place of whoredom. I mean, I don't even know how to say it correctly. I may be using the wrong word. I don't mean like whoredom. I don't, yeah, anyway, you know what I mean. But you're jam-packed. You're full of weights, sins, and issues that so easily beset you and trip you up. Now, you're outside in the public, and they see the professional side, but the personal side is a jacked-up pile of, I don't know what I'm looking at up in here. Because you have never forgiven. You have not shaken the, the old stuff, the old weights, the, uh, the ball and chain. You can't forgive what your daddy did and what your mama did and what your brother did and what your sister said and what, and what they didn't give to you and what you missed out on and what you should have gotten but you didn't get and what your neighbors got and what you didn't get and, and, and the, the places you didn't get to go and the things that the kids did to you in school and those black kids treated you so mean and those white kids treated you like a germ and the teachers didn't like you and the principal was mean to you and you just go through your life just adding insult to injury and you don't throw it away. You hoard it. You hoard it all. You hoard it and you hoard it and you hoard it. And before you know, you are buried in this mound of torment. Think about that. Just, just think for a minute. Reflect on it. What are you buried under? What are you soured by? What's got all your thinking stinking? Something, there's a stench. You can't quite find where the source is. But something stinks in your life real bad. And you don't even know why. Because there's so much of it piled up. That you have confused. And you have confusion. You're dwelling in confusion. You're run by confusion and chaos. And oh, torment and turmoil. And oh, it's like a web of... I don't even know. I, I can't even think of the word. But you are one unhappy camper because you can't get a grip on yourself. You got a grip on the money. You got a grip on your life. You, I mean, on, not on your life. You got a grip on your business. You got a grip on your on your yard, your property, how pretty your house looks, your cars, your stuff. You got a grip on your stuff. But you don't have a clue with you. You have to go to God with that. What's happening in your house, the chaos, the, 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 the discombobulation, whatever you want to call it, is a symptom, baby. Something needs to be healed in you. You're hurting. You're, you're ill at ease. You're not at rest. You don't have peace in your spirit. You're cluttered with a mound of hurts. Maybe you've been abused. Maybe you just don't have any coping skills. Whatever the case may be. Do you know everything that you lack, God has? Everything you long for, God can give to you. Please go to God. Whatever you do. Ask him to get inside there and straighten you out. There's an old song I used to like. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard it. It's not a real fancy song. It's not a classic. But it sure tells the story. He took me and made something beautiful out of my life. He took me and made something beautiful out of my life. He took a wretch, a wretch like me. And showed me his love and concern. And by his grace, he made my life a new and better one. I owe him my all. I cannot let him down. Because he's the one who made something beautiful out of my life. He can take the ugliest, the most soiled, the most shameful, the uh, oh my goodness, I, I can't even find all the words to express to you how able God is to heal the areas in your life. 
that have have exploded, that have have turned into this big giant monster, this big boogie bear, this boogeyman. He can get rid of the boogeyman in your life. He can get rid of the ghosts and the skeletons that rattle in your closet. I am telling you, whatever you did that you can't tell anybody about, you can tell God. You can repent for it. Ask his forgiveness. Let him get in there, even if it was towards him. Even if you were angry and resentful and blamed him. Tell him that. Come on now. There is nothing, nothing that you can't be healed from, nothing that you can't be delivered from, freed up from. You can live a free, abundant, fulfilled, fully gratifying life. It has nothing to do with the stuff I'm talking about in here, you guys. Life makes more sense. You make more sense. You even get to know who you are by getting to know God because he knows you better than you do. And he can introduce you. You meet self. Self meet you. Become one in my love. And behold, in the name of Jesus, that's what God could do for you. Oh, I wish I could paint a picture to show you what I'm talking about. But you have to, you have to get in the waters to get wet. You have to get in God to get whole. You have to accept Jesus to, to experience that healing. God bless you. I'm done. Now, what are you going to do?